we have come to unit 6. This particular module comes about to understanding capacity. By the end of this unit, students will be able to define capacity, classify capacity, state the various factors affecting capacity, review examples from the garment industry to illustrate concepts. In this unit, we would be discussing about capacity, SAM, line capacity, section or factory capacity and factory capacity for attendance and efficiency. Now let us try to understand what is capacity. Capacity refers to the productive capable potential. In other words, output of a plant or a machine or a work center in a given period of time. Capacity is created from the availability of resources. The resources could vary in between machine, time, space availability, facilities that require capital investment by the firm or the company. Capacity is generally measured in units of output that is let us say number of garments but may also be expressed in terms of input in words of let us say number of hours or days or minutes. Let us try to understand what are the various factors uh, that affects capacity. Any changes in the following factors will automatically determine the capacity of the company. The first and most important being space utilization and limitations. It basically tells us what is the availability of space and how much machinery can be used in that particular space and how well the space is being utilized. It also defines what are the limitations that stops us from creating extra machines etc. Next comes equipment type configuration and uses. This depends on the investment the company is ready to input, also the requirement of the company. Next comes the skill, size, versatility and productivity of the labor force. In short, we can define we should be able to identify and understand the skill set of the labor force. And finally comes the most important factor which is product variation. Any change in the product will completely determine the make or break of what our capacity is required. Under capacity, there are various terminologies that are used to identify and understand what is our current requirement and what should be our committed requirement. So let me just go through the terminologies that are used. The first is maximum capacity, potential capacity, committed capacity, available capacity, required capacity or excess capacity. Let me go in detail what each are. What is maximum capacity? It basically defines the total hours available under normal conditions in a given period of time. Like we discussed, capacity can be expressed in hours or minutes or even garments. Generically, while defining any kind of factory, it is defined in hours. Like I said, again let me reiterate, maximum capacity defines the total hours available. Next comes potential capacity. Potential capacity is nothing but maximum capacity adjusted for efficiency. Let us take an example. For example, the maximum capacity is 
for a any given working day is 8 hours. So, we have 8 hours of maximum capacity whereas our efficiency of the factory is 90, 90 percentage then automatically the potential capacity is calculated based on the 90 percentage for the given 8 hours. Hope you guys have a clear idea now. Next comes the committed capacity. Committed capacity is the total hours previously allocated for production during a certain period of time. In the sense, if we have an already committed style running and we do know it would be going to take so and so time, that refers to as committed capacity. Next comes available capacity. It is a very simple definition. The difference between the potential capacity and the already committed capacity for a certain time period basically telling us what is the available leftover capacity we have that is available capacity. Let us move on now to required capacity. Required capacity that is the standard allowed hours necessary to produce a specific volume in a certain period of time. This basically refers to the time taken for any garment to be produced for so and so volume that is required for it to be completed. Let us say we need 500 pieces of style 8 needs to be completed. We need to understand what is the required capacity for that style A. And finally, we have excess capacity. Excess capacity is the extra capacity that we have. So, the definition would be difference being your potential capacity and your required capacity. To understand planned capacity, we basically need to have a projection of the total hours available for production in a given period of time for a certain facility. Let us take an example and see how to calculate the planned capacity. Let us move on to the whiteboard for the calculation. Now that we have understood the terminologies in capacity, let us try and understand how calculations are done. Let us take an example now. Let us say if a factory has 100 working machines and are working for 8 hours in a day. They have 26 working days per month and the efficiency of the operators is at 80 percentage. Now let us try to calculate maximum capacity. Maximum capacity can be calculated with the number of machines. and the time available. So, the number of machines that we have would be 100 machines into what is the time available? We have 8 hours in a day and 26 days in a month. So, it would be 8 hours into 26 days. Hope you guys are following. Maximum capacity is calculated based on the machines that is equipment available and the time available. So, here we have 100 machines into 8 hours into 26 days. So, the calculation if I want to explain even further 100 into 8 hours can be expanded into minutes by saying 8 into 60 minutes per day into 26, 100 into 480 into 26. So, the calculations would be 12,48,000 minutes per month or if you would want to convert it into hours per month, 
the maximum capacity would be 20,800 hours per month. So, now that we have calculated maximum capacity, we can easily calculate the potential capacity. So, potential capacity is the same machines into time but into efficiency. This is the added formula. So, in short, we can say potential capacity is equal to maximum capacity into efficiency. All right. So, if we calculate the maximum capacity, sorry, if we calculate the potential capacity, our solution would be, so the potential capacity can be calculated as 100 into 8 hours into 26 days into 80 percentage. So, our so, potential capacity can be calculated as 100 into 8 hours into 26 days into 80 percentage, where our calculations would come to 99,84,000 minutes per day or it could be written as 16,440 hours per month. This is how potential capacity is calculated for the factory. Now, in all these calculations, there is some word terminology called SAM which keeps, keeps coming in. SAM, what does SAM mean? It is one of the most common and important terminology in garment production. Required production capacity is based on SAM, which is the abbreviated form of standard allowed minutes. Standard allowed minutes basically refers to the time taken for a garment to get completed. So, it is basically the allocated time and the standard time that should be taken for a garment to get completed. This is generally used in the sewing floor. So, it is integral in capacity calculation. The total SAM SAM that is standard allowed minutes of one unit of a particular style is multiplied by the number of units ordered to determine the time requirement of the order. Let me reiterate the total SAM of an unit of a particular style is multiplied by the number of units that is the volume ordered to determine the time requirement of the order. Since SAM is a short form of standard allowed minutes, it needs to be converted to hours. So, total SAM are often converted to standard allowed hours that is SAH for capacity planning. Now, let us try and understand the case study of a company called Stitch Tailor, which will give us a better clarity for SAM calculations and capacity calculation. Stitch Tailor operates a small apparel contract sewing business that employs 10 operators who work 7 hours a day. This particular plant has an efficiency factor of 90%. A customer that is a new customer bought in an order for production of 6000 units of style A that needs to be completed within 10 days. The 
plant has the appropriate equipment and skills available to make the style. But the plant has already committed a capacity of 300 hours for the next 10 day period. Style A has a production time of 5 SAM. The order for 6000 units requires 30,000 SAM or 500 SAH. What factors should be considered in deciding whether to accept the order? Can we try and figure out? First, let us understand how to calculate the potential capacity of this plant for 10 working days. So, we have 7 hours of work per day. For 10 working days, it would be 70 working hours. With a 90 percent efficiency, we would ideally have 70 into 90 percentage that is 63, per, 63 potential production hours per day. Let us try to do the solution for this case study. So, let us try to find out what is the potential capacity. So, uh, for the for the 10 days we will be calculating the potential capacity. There are totally 7 hours of work with 10 operators. So, we have 70 working hours per day correct. Over and above this the operators work at a 90 percent efficiency. So, 7 hours into 10 operators will give us 70 working hours per day. At 90 percent efficiency, this would give us 63 potential production hours per day. In total, we have 10 days of production. So, 63 potential production hours per day into 10 days will give us 630 hours in total of potential capacity. I repeat the answer would be 630 hours for potential capacity. Let us try to understand what is the required capacity for the order. So, the order is of 6000 units and the SAM per unit is 5 minutes. So, the required capacity is 5 into 6000 that is equal to 30,000 SAM or if we want to convert it into standard allowed hours that is SAH, it is 500 SAH. The answer I repeat is 30,000 SAM that is standard allowed minutes or 500 SAH. Is there adequate potential now, for potential capacity for the order? Let us see to answer yes or no. As we have calculated, we already have 630 hours of potential capacity and the required capacity for the new order is 500 hours. So, yes, we have 130 hours of excess capacity currently for the order. Let us see if we have the available capacity in the specified time frame as we have already committed a couple of orders. So, we have 630 hours of potential capacity and 300, 300 hours of already committed capacity which leaves us with 330 hours of available capacity. So, with the new fact that we need 500 hours of required capacity and 330 hours of the capacity is already committed, do we have the space to accept the order? No, we are running short of 170 standard hours. So, let us try and see if this also can be accommodated. What adjustments need to be made to adequate to make adequate capacity? Number one is we could expedite the new order. So, it would have priority over previously committed orders. Is that possible? Yes, it could be an option. Option number two could be 
make the operators to work over time to get the order completed. Option 3 could be offer operators a bonus if the group can average over 100% efficiency for 10 days. As you can see from this case study with the current with the requirements that we have that we are getting and also the committed capacity we can always juggle around with the factors and make sure ha and have a clarity if we would be able to make a particular deadline. Hope you guys have a clear idea now how to calculate excess capacity or potential capacity based on the SAM values or SAHs that is given to us. Let us try to understand what the production standard is. It is defined as the rate stated in SAM or SAH that is the standard allowed hours that reflects the time required for a normal operator to complete one operation using a specified method. Let me reiterate production standard is defined as the rate stated in SAM or SAH that reflects the time required for a normal operator to complete one operation using a specified method. As you can see it is automatically related to the capacity. Indicators of which operation may have excess capacity and which operations have potential to be a constraint or a bottleneck automatically comes out in production standard. As you can see in this table the total production time is 5 SAM that is 5 minutes for a total of 9 operators. If we take an average as you can see the average time that should be taken for these operations is 0.55 SAM which basically is the division between 5 SAM divided by 9 that is we have 9 operations. So on an average the time taken should be 0.55. Any operation which has a SAM over 0.55 SAM has the potential to be a constraint that is a bottleneck and any operation which has SAM less than 0.55 minutes would be would be operations with excess capacity. If you can see here operation 1 with 0.35 SAM, operation 2 with 0.45 SAM, operation 3 with 0 0.50 SAM and operation 8 with 0 0.50 SAM and finally operation 9 with 0 0.40 SAM have excess capacity. Operation 4 with 0.75 SAM, operation 6 with 0 0.90 SAM, operation 7 with 0 0.60 SAM have the potential to be a constraint or a bottleneck because they are above the average SAM that is 0.55 SAM. Production standards are used in factory planning to do the following. They are used to estimate the rate or time for completion of each operation, determine the required capacity for an order or a style, determine production start dates and completion dates for an order. Production standards are also used to plan the daily volume that should be completed. They are used to determine required inventory in the factory planning to support the workflow. Production standards determine how many operators and machines should be performing each and every operator. They are utilized to schedule specialized equipment that are required from style to style. Production standards are used in factory planning to balance workflow in between departments 
and as well as work centers. They are extremely important in planning and monitoring production delays if any and they are used to assess performance of individual operators skill set and efficiency. Let us try and understand what is managing plant capacity. There are three major headings which you would be undergoing through this. The first one is routing, loading and scheduling. Routing, loading and scheduling are the systems often referred to as shop floor controls which are integral in managing plant capacity. Routing. Routing basically provides bridge between long range production planning and execution. Establishes a path a style should follow during conversion. For example, routing would basically let us know what path and which line should a style be put in so that we will know the whole directional route the particular style is going to take. It forms a, like a chain or a link in between and across departments. Next we come to loading. Loading specify the work centers that will be used and the volume that needs to be processed in a specific period of time. Here when we are talking about loading it is more of interdepartmental understanding and routing. Factors necessary for loading would include routing, SAM that is standard allowed minutes because we need to understand what is the time taken for the style to get completed, machine availability and labor availability and also what is the time available for us. We also need to understand loading through efficiency factors and of course deadlines on when a particular style needs to be completed. The third part of plant capacity here is scheduling. Plant loading assigns specific jobs to production lines. But the sequence of processing the orders for priority control and allocation of various resources is determined by scheduling. Like we said, routing is for giving us a chain of events across departments. Loading is for a particular department. To manage everything, we need something called scheduling, which is what we are discussing right now. Scheduling is the process of assigning start times and completion times to job or order. Back scheduling is often done. It begins with the order due date and calculates backward from the last operation to the first to set the start date of any style. Finally, we come to understand the term called learning curve. What is the learning curve? You have heard terminologies like experience curve, startup curve or progress function. It all means the same learning curve. Learning curve is basically a scale on which proficiency in completing a task is related to the frequency of completing the task. During the learning curve period, potential capacity for an operation needs to be adjusted as output from the operation is expected to follow projections of the learning curve. You have come to the end of this unit. In this unit you learnt about capacity and its various kinds. You have also learnt about various factors that affect capacity.